Right guys, Mark Crossfield here, sunny San Diego. Am I in San Diego? You're just on the north Carlsbad. edge of San Diego. Yeah, yeah excellent. Yeah. I'm here with Nick. Where am I, Nick? Yeah. Where, have you, where have you brought me? This is the Ely Callaway Performance Center. We're thrilled to have Mark come and visit us. And um, this is a fun place for a guy like Mark who oh. wants to really see where the rubber meets the road in terms Absolutely. of the science of golf. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting in there. What are we going to see in there? What kind of stuff are the guys going to quickly see in You're there? You're going to see some very interesting stuff. Uh, firstly, a club build room where yeah. uh, our friend Garrett that works here does all the club builds for Phil Mickelson and all of our staff pros. Fantastic. Um, you're going to see a lot of in inside measurement devices, projection screens, the ball flies out there, gives you all the launch data, the putting studio. There's a robot where we do a lot of the testing and then we do a ton of testing outside and you'll see that as you as we tour around as well fantastic so we're going to go and check out this fitting center this kind of building center this center of excellence for Callaway if you like not open to the public not only open no. to you today only open to me I brought the public in via YouTube absolutely you're all in here now <laughs> let's get stuck in You know, talking the internet about how you know amateurs sometimes will complain, especially golf geeks, equipment geeks will complain that you know we can't get the same clubs the pros get. And really, you're going to get the exact same head that the pros are using when you see them play it on TV. That club head that you see Gary Woodland playing came off the exact same assembly line that the club you're going to buy came from. It's just that when we build a club for tour pros, we measure with a tighter specification. Okay. So instead of having a choice between a 9.0 degree head and a 10.5 degree head. If Gary Woodland comes in and wants a 9.2, we're going to set the club up at exactly 9.2. That's the difference. Yeah. The, the ball is not going to move any faster off the face. The technology and features and benefits are no different. It's just that we build the clubs to a tighter specification. So if you had the ability and the machines to measure at that level of tolerance, you could take a set off the rack and you could set it up like any of your favorite tour pros. Yeah. But you have to have the equipment so that you understand. You're going to have to understand as well. I mean, obviously these guys specifically often know exactly what they want built around obviously their high levels of ability the guys like you say online who are saying you know we don't get the same club which i see that everywhere as well right probably 0.5 of a degree isn't going to make that much difference to someone who's moving the ball 30 yards in the air on the match Ab absolutely and it certainly their needs are a little bit different yeah, right so exactly. the better the player becomes the more tight those specifications need to be yeah but the first goal is maybe going to your local club fitter and finding out what is it that i actually need and then once you decide what you actually need, then trying to set the club up so it matches that, that so this specification. this machine measures to a very fine tolerance, is that what we're Loft and lie, right? So this golf club, now a face has roll on it, right? So yeah. it's actually curved up and down. So it depends on how high and to what extent I put this little, Absolutely. these little pins. But this club- so you can measure that face at any, po any point? Any point, yeah. any point. So this one, in, in what I've defined as the geometric center, yeah. is 8.8 .8 degrees of loft. Okay. And that's irrele it's irrelevant what it says in the bottom, what's stamped on the bottom. Excellent. That's in this orientation with this setting on the cog at the center of that face and I just chose. So that's the center of the face, maybe not even the point they want to hit it on. As such. Oh, or you'll get a tour pro that doesn't really matter because he hits everything a little high toe anyway. I, mean, I was just about to say, my driver, I'm high toe. Yeah, so the loft, loft for you, if you hit this club and someone hits it low heel and you hit it high toe, you're getting a total loft, yeah. different loft of impact. Absolutely. Right, so not only will you get a drop and spin, you're gonna get a higher launch angle given other things are constrained like attack angle and Along spin with exactly, loft. and the fact that I'm presenting a different loft as well. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's spin loft, right. Exactly. It's the orientation of the club. Yeah. It's that face plane. It's the center of gravity behind that face plane and which direction that is going. Absolutely. And right. you have to combine all those features to understand what the ball is feeling at impact. Fantastic. And it's going to be different there than it is there, than it is there, than it is there. Absolutely. And so when we're working on the tour pro, we're looking at those, we're doing those face mappings and we're looking at those hit locations in the face. And we're trying to describe to them, even though some pros don't want to necessarily hear about it, yeah, yeah. for our purposes for fitting the club, it's like we have to know how all these variables come into play when he actually hits so, the ball. So that's interesting because I, I, I've experienced that with some of the better players that I've taught back in the UK. They often don't want to really know 
they just want to be tucked. Is, is that one right for me? Yeah, that one's right for you. Okay, great. I'll use that one. I'm sure you'll you get a few guys. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. They the, don't particularly want to know why they're good. They just want to be good. Yeah, the assumption when I work with an amateur, the amateur goes, "Wow, I get the I best. The pros get really technical." I go, yeah. "No, it's not skill driven." Yeah. It's there, a pro is typically gonna be a little more interested in amateur, but generally speaking, it's personality driven. Absolutely. So I'll get a 24 handicapper that's an engineer that wants to know every number, yeah, but he's hitting a slice over the fence. Yeah, yeah. I'll get a tour pro, a world class player that comes in and goes, you know what? You guys don't show me in your squiggly lines and numbers. <laughs> I'll tell you when the club feels right. I'll tell you when visually I've seen what I want to see yeah, and can yeah. play golf with. Yeah. And you guys give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, but don't put me in front of the monitor and start pointing at numbers yeah. and lines because yeah. that's just gonna confuse me. Very interesting. Right. So. Right, this is an exciting room, guys. We are in front of the robots. What happens in here? This is where it all happens. This is the real testing, is it? This is this is where the rubber meets the road scientifically, and this machine is the best driver of golf ball in the game of golf. Better than me? A little better than you. A little longer, a little straighter. He doesn't hits watch it, the video. Hits it more solid. <laughs> he can't putt though. Yeah, he can't putt at all. No, good, a good putt. scramble, you know, for a <laughs> member. But what what the robot's obviously really good at is we're trying to remove the variable of the golfer from the equation so that we can isolate what the club's actually doing, okay. what the club's actually responsible for, what changes technically we can make to the club, and then produce an actual change in the ball flight. Where the, the the robot is. For all intents and purposes, stupid. It does not react to anything. It doesn't react to the shaft. It doesn't like the way it looks. It doesn't, oh, the sound's wrong. It doesn't do any of that. It delivers, we can deliver any attack angle we want, any path angle we want, within a tenth of a millimeter on hit location. Set the dynamic face angle and the dynamic lofted impact. We can zero things out and really start to do very accurate comparisons between not only our last year's club versus this year's prototype, we can also compare our competitors' clubs. So we can look and go, hey, this competitor does things certain certain things very well. Other things, maybe it's got a chink in the armor over here. There's physics trade-offs you're making with each club, and so we can see where our club fits in the competitive landscape. And another thing a club does, which is really, which is really necessary for a business, is that if we make a claim that our new driver is 7.2 yards longer, we need to be able to back that up legally with data because it may get questioned, it may get challenged. And so with, we could do it with people, but it would take hours and hours and tons of people and tons of resources and 200,000 hits to get to a statistical significance that a club is longer. This guy can do it in about 200 hits and you're done, you've got the data you need. Fantastic, great. So this is where those claims are kind of cemented, if you like, this is where they're proven to you and then you put it out to the consumer. Absolutely. Great, fun room, thanks for showing it guys. Right Nick, thank you. What a privilege, I, mean, I feel really privileged, A, for coming out to an amazing part of the world and seeing such an amazing centre, I mean, the work that goes on there. I think lots of the public at home maybe don't realise how much kind of design and work goes into these products. It's a lot, isn't it, really? Yeah, there's there's a lot of research going on behind the scenes that people don't get a peek at. Absolutely. Today, thanks to you, they get to kind of get an idea on what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say that watching you hit balls, you're almost as good as the robot. Oh. Not quite. Not, Not quite. <laughs> Almost. And you putt better. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Callaway, for inviting me over. Great place. Uh, like I say, it's not open to the public. It's your, your guy. It's like your playing ground. Got to get on tour if you want to come here, haven't you? Or Bring your a, tour or card. Or have a big YouTube channel. We'll check your tour card at the front gate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There you go, guys. Post comments down below. Love to hear what you've got to say. I mean, what an amazing place, eh? Thanks for watching, and we'll speak to you all soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.